In this video, we are going to be installing a set of ID1050 injectors from Injector Dynamics and a Deechworks, or however you want to say it, DW400 fuel pump to supply this Mach 1 to make upwards of 700 horsepower. Let's get started. We're gonna get started with the injectors. Um, if you've never done fuel injectors before, uh, just, you know, hey, you're gonna spill a little bit of fuel. So even though we depressurize the system, there'll probably still be a little bit of residual fuel in the system that you'll have to mess with. Just know that. Um, let me show you a tool that'll be nice to have here. Uh, get yourself, and this is just a little cheapy one. These are fuel line um, clip removers, whatever you wanna call them fuel line removal tool. You will need those, um, and I'll show you the exact size when we get to that step. Take your time with these. Make sure you do lubricate up the new O-rings before you install them. And one last thing, depending on what size of injectors you install, some are different heights. So sometimes you need to have a spacer. Um, I don't think the ID1050s will, um, but some do. And um, trying to think what else is key here. Uh, sometimes this is probably not the case anymore, but back in the day, there were different style plugs and you could even have adapters, but I don't think that's the case anymore. So I'll throw the camera up there and we will get started on the installation. So we'll get started here. Uh, we will be removing basically anything that's in the way of accessing the injectors. Now you could do this kind of stuff with, um, with power tools, but I don't know. Sometimes you run the risk of breaking things. I've had, I've actually done it before, breaking stuff loose on this car where um, they used a bunch of Loctite from the factory and my impact cracked the, uh, the bolt. So uh, I'm just gonna take our time here, pull all the stuff off and, uh, and go slowly. Unclip the injectors on the driver's side. You could label these if you want to. little bit less room on this side. So now is where you will get to see me use the uh, fuel line removal tool. The trick here is to find the one that fits over the tightest. Um, if it's got slack in it, if it's kind of sloppy, it's the wrong size. You slide it over, push it in there, and then you should be able to separate out the other side. It won't work. There we go. Now, we did drain it, but there was still a little bit of fuel in there. If I was extra safe, I'd probably have some safety glasses on or something like that. Now's a good time to look around and make sure there's nothing else that's uh, holding it down. Obviously on the other side, we've got to disconnect some things too. Okay. And start loosening the bolts. Now they're a little bit tighter. And I probably will look up what the torque spec is on those. You wanna make sure you break all of the uh, O-rings loose before you try to pop it up out of there so you don't start dropping stuff. Honestly, I've done injectors on um, quite a few cars before, and this is pretty darn easy. Um, I love the way that the injectors clip in up top here um, to the rail. Kind of holds everything in place. Again, shouldn't see anything too weird. Sometimes in older cars, it's not uncommon to see some crap around the O-rings. Things tends to fall in there. Uh, we'll take a flashlight, shine in, and make sure that that seating surface where this bottom O-ring goes into the manifold is nice and clean before we install it, reinstall it. As you can see, even with 4,000 miles on it, you get a lot of crud. 
And unfortunately, there's not really a great way to clean that without knocking stuff down into the motor. So we'll have to decide what we want to do there. But as you can see, just road grime and everything gets down in there. We might take a rag and uh, helps if you can see where I'm pointing and just try and wipe some of that out. We don't want to knock a bunch of stuff down into the intake though. So I'll throw the time lapse on. You'll see me pop these clips off. Um, you should just be able to spread them with your fingers and pop them off. And then we'll install one by one, making sure everything gets nice and seated in there. You'll probably also see me take some engine oil and just put a little bit around the O-rings just so it slides nice and easy in there. Don't go crazy with the oil, but also don't worry. Um, it's gonna be totally fine. Um, you're just lubricating that O-ring a little bit. You could use probably Vaseline or whatever else really. In case anyone was curious, here's a side-by-side -side, um, of the ID1050s installed versus the stockers. Now, one thing I did notice on these is they've got this little protruding kind of tip to them, whereas these uh, 1050s do not. I don't really know why they do this, um, whether it's better, worse, different, who knows, um, but those are the stock pieces. So we'll put those back in the bag. We'll go ahead and clean up over on the engine side. I might grab some Q-tips or something to dive in there and uh, double check that all my clips are on and then we'll go ahead and pop this down and reinstall. So fun fact, I've actually never um, installed a fuel pump like this in the car before. I've done Holly EFI setups where I had a brand new tank. I've installed inline fuel pumps, mechanical fuel pumps, but I've never gone into a modern car. Um, so we're gonna take this a little bit slower than we did with the injectors. So kind of first things first, you're gonna have to get into the back of your car. Um, I was smart enough before I disconnected the battery to move my seat, which is electric, all the way forward. Um, I did also unhook the rear seat, which I'll completely remove. And if you remember from an earlier video, I unplugged and then started the car so I would drain all the fuel pressure out. I did also run the car down to about a quarter tank. You want the minimal amount of fuel in here because as you'll probably see in a little bit when I break this all loose, uh, you're gonna spill some fuel. And pull this out. There we go. Got that out. And this is actually pretty clean in here. I've read a few things about hitting this with some brake clean. Maybe I'll do that, but my car only has 4,000 miles on it, so it is pretty clean. That's what it took. There's a step when you do this where they say, don't drop that in the tank, otherwise you'll go fishing. And uh, that's the step I kind of want to pay attention to because I, I really don't want to go fishing. Definitely the part they recommend you don't lose. Let's 
Wow, that gas removes uh, paint. That's good to know. Just taking the paint right off here. Imagine if I would have had a full tank, Jesus. Okay, so I just poured out all the extra fuel that was in there. Um, at this point, I'm gonna try and take some pictures so I can kind of get a good idea of how everything was lined up. Okay, so we removed the wiring and from what I've seen the instructions basically um, this hose will stay we're not going to replace this one that goes from the filter up to the top but uh, we're pretty much good to cut this one and this one these both will come off and they will be replaced cut that one and we'll cut the one from the pump okay I wound up pulling the level too, just so if I'm wiggling stuff around, this doesn't get bent. It's just one electrical connector, and then you unhook these two purple wires from these little clips right here, and there's a tab you press down, it slides right out. So I'm just gonna set this out of the way, um, just so it doesn't get damaged. And then we can proceed forward with separating the two halves. Trying the old three screwdriver method to release those tangs. I'll have to set the camera down, and then hopefully I can slide it up out of there. I got them separated. Um, <laughs> I see one spring, I don't see the other, so I'm hoping that the spring didn't fly loose when I pulled them apart. Uh, okay, I did watch a video. It looks like there is only one spring, so that's good. Um, I took a razor blade and carefully sliced uh, this line right here and took the stock one, removed it, slid the one that comes with the kit all the way down on there. Not difficult. Make sure you've got your little piece on there, then we'll take a pair of uh, dikes and just crimp that so it holds it in place. But so the stock... Uh, fuel sock or filter, pre-filter comes off. That's real easy. There's just one little clip right there. And then if you've already removed all your wiring, you can just slide the fuel pump out the bottom like so. And then one big thing is we'll compare the difference here, the inlet uh, against the new pump. And, and right off the bat, the new pump is a lot bigger. So we are gonna have to trim down here in order for this to slide up into place because it won't fit otherwise. So on my right side, we've got the DW400 and then look at that tiny little hole. So if you compare, you can see that's, I mean, it's way bigger on the DW400. It's going to suck in a lot more fuel, which is just another reason why, of course, you don't want to run these things low on fuel. So don't be ripping on your car with, you know, under a quarter tank of gas. It's just not worth it. Just in case you don't believe me, they don't fit. So uh, what you can do is just take a pair of dikes, cut this right here, That'll let this spread out and you can slide that up in there. So make sure you got a nice sharp pair of dikes and let's go ahead and give that a shot. Just test fit it there. Um, so that's inside, we'll pull this back out, throw the sock on there. And again, um, I remember from before that we had the electrical connector pointing towards that line. So that's gonna be the orientation which means we'll need to have the sock like so. Got our sock on there. Uh, that one definitely takes a little bit of elbow grease. Um, just take your time, don't force it. I may go ahead and install these clamps while I already have the pump off, so I'm not trying to wrestle it while it's in there, and I'll just feed them through the top. Nice solid crimp there, and then they give you an extra, just make sure you don't accidentally try and put this on, and then we'll go slide this in there, make sure it all fits and then slide them all back together. So when you're sliding that up in there, just make sure that you've got your hose going through the hole in the top. Um, I did test to make sure that the springs work. So this is engaging the springs. Um, make sure your fuel pump is obviously all the way down and that your sock isn't bound up at all. Um, looks like we are all good. So I believe this did like a little loop-de-loo. Um, we'll go back to my pictures. That's why I took pictures in the beginning before we install and just to be extra safe. Okay, worst part of this so far is easily getting this little side. It's almost probably why they give you two in case you break one. Getting this right here over, and I'm using the other pump for reference over this. So what I did was 
I use something like this to try and stretch it out a little bit. I even put a little heat to this to try and get some of that heat, not too hot, but just to transfer over to the hose. And then I carefully used a pair of ne needle nose and like just get it, got it down on there. Take your time because I could see how you could easily break that. Don't forget to reattach your ground wire. Um, and when you do that, I kind of like the idea of just putting a little kink in it. It's got a tang that holds it in place, but that will just keep it from ever wanting to back itself out. Uh, make sure everything moves freely. All your lines look clean and out of the way. And uh, you should be good to reassemble this thing. I almost forgot, don't forget to install your float. Make sure it clicks up into place. The wiring harness goes in and uh, your wires are nice and out of the way. I am pouring with sweat and it was really hot. <laughs> it's 100 degrees in there with all those fumes. I need to step out of the garage. I did not film the last little bit, but I got it all put back in there. Make sure if you disconnected your fuel pump to depressurize the system, you hook that back up. Now go get yourself some fresh air and feel accomplished because that was no fun. And I'm gonna try and not die of asphyxiation and heat stroke right now. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.